what's up, everybody? This is Gary Hall from Exodus and formerly from Slayer, and you're listening to The Razor's Edge. Hi, guys. This is Patrick from The Razor's Edge, and I'm here with Spawn from Hate, who've just played a blistering set at Slamfest in Manchester. How you doing, guys? Yeah, good. Not bad, thanks. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, tired. <laughs> So it's been quite a busy year for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it has. Fuck oh, there's a rat. A, rat. <laughs> a giant. A giant rat just went, ran past. Welcome to Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking massive. <laughs> so were you pleased with your set? I think so. Yeah. Um, it's weird because it's like we haven't. The last time we played was in May. There he goes again. Um, we. I've practiced once since, but I think it's yeah. I, I was I was I was happy for the most part. Yeah. What about you guys? I like the sound, it was good. Yeah. It's always something uh, which can trip us up. Um, our, our setup is like really modern and not the most common, I don't think. And but that sound man was spot on today. And, uh, I'm really pleased with that. Did you cut out a few times though? <laughs> yeah, my my my, um, my wireless transmitter turned itself off on my leg. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was, it wasn't twice. purposely an extra long bass solo. No, no. <laughs> yeah, we, we, that we, wasn't we, the we, plan. we don't give Dave that kind of attention. <laughs> <laughs> he might be the founding member of the band, yeah, but, but yeah, he, he gets his one little bass bit in um, in Butcher My Master, and other than that, we make sure he's drowned out by the time. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, no offence to you, but those bits sounded pretty cool, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I thought. Yeah, we'll bring it in, yeah, I'll get yeah. a rest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's like, yeah, it, like I say, it, this is just a fun festival. This yeah. Is really, yeah. you know, and I think that it's definitely a festival that um, has helped. Um, I think it's definitely helped improve the, the death metal scene in the UK. Yeah, almost definitely. There's... It's gone through very up and down periods, I think, and I think that there's, um, you know, we, I mean, I think we've all seen the extreme highs and we've all seen the extreme lows because we were all, I mean, we, we were all kind of, we all came into it at the at the, at the, at the probably the back end of the of the glory years of um, of the of the of the sound. I think that we've definitely seen it elevated with that with what UK Slamfest has done and how it's helped. Yeah, bring interest in the genre and more festivals um, that have cropped up in the Midwest I think because of it. I think there's the slam scene sort of incorporating itself in the UK death belt scene has, has obviously helped and brought a, a new generation in almost. It's brought a new generation in but it's, I think the annoyance of it is is that it's all death metal at heart and yeah. I, I'm always a very big um, I don't know I, I, I can't stand the idea of all this stuff separating because it doesn't matter if you're internal bleeding or immolation or devourment or disgorge or fucking bolt thrower you all play death metal yeah and i think that one thing that this festival does really well is it brings various styles of death metal together mm. granted it's called you know it's called uk slam fest i know some people do whinge because there's not enough slam, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, if, if you know if i have to hear the same riff <laughs> by every band it wouldn't be as it just it, it it's not it's not interesting it's not interesting no and I, I agree think that, yeah uh, and but yeah it's definitely um, it's my favorite festival in, yeah. in the UK it really is and I'm taking up all the time soon <laughs> <laughs> well, well you, you do most of the talking anyway now. <laughs> That, that's your uh, forte, <laughs> being the vocalist and yeah, all that. It's, um, big, big man. Yeah. It's my first time at, 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 at any of the slam fests in, here in the UK, and um, we were commenting on the way up that there yeah. aren't many, um, you know, isn't much slam on the bill, which for old timers like us is probably a bit preferable actually, but for probably uh, yeah. uh, straighter, more more old style death metal. I mean, you can tell that by our album, you know, the fact that we are. Um, yeah, but, uh, an album which is kind of that classic, as Dan puts it, that classic unique leader style from the early 2000s, where I was, um, you know, the type of band of which comes to mind is Disavowed, which are absolutely stonked to be in the same band as today. Yeah. And, yeah, and we listened to On The Way Up. Yeah. And I remember listening to that album for the first time back in like 2004, and uh, so chuffed to be playing, playing with them and, and seeing them today. Yeah, that, that, 
I think everybody's looking forward to that set, aren't they? We were meant to play with Disavowed in Russia, and they pulled out yeah. oh, yeah. when we played um, oh, yeah. Coyote Brutal first. It was meant yeah. to be them and Vomit Remnants as the headliners. Um, but yeah, it's going to be. I, I laughed to. I, I, this is the, the funny thing is, is that the only two years that Joe and the team have ever had a headliner pull out is when we played. Um, <laughs> so you know, they obviously book coincidence. Yeah, they, wow. they, 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 yeah. they book cowardly headliners originally, and yeah. someone's come up um, to um, you know to take over. Yeah. But I think that's credit to this festival as well because. You know, you could have. You know, you lost. You, know, you lost pathology. Who are you know? Pathology are a key friggin' death metal royalty. And yeah. Been replaced by death metal royalty. Yeah. And I yeah. think a lot of festivals have this tendency of they'll lose a band, and they'll they'll cheapen it. No, yeah. I know that it's not always possible when you've got if it's someone who's cancelling a big tour, but Pathology cancelled a big tour. Yeah. You know, they yeah. were doing a full European tour that went tits up and. You know, the team decided to, oh no, we'll get disavowed. Yeah. Hideous Civility was the same thing. Hideous yeah. Civility cancelled yeah. because they got on the Nile tour, tour and yeah. they replaced them with Devangelic. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's it's, not they're not cheapening they're not they're not cheapening the fan. No. I mean, that's that's yeah. why really well that, that's why, you know, they you know they, Credit credit to Joe on that one and, and his contact. Yeah, the whole it's team. Great job. You know, yeah. And the reputation of the fest. Yeah. I mean, we, enables them to, you know, we, to get we were people like that, doesn't it? Twice in Leeds. Yeah, we know we did it. We did. Oh, we did it sixteen in Leeds. Yeah, um, and, and this year. And this year. Um, but we like yeah. me and me and Dave used to go to like every edition yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, you know, we had to we had to you know share a hotel room. Yeah. A bed at times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was worth it. Yeah. It was always you know it, it was just a, it was just it, just a great you know a great time. Yeah. So the album came out. Just remind me what what month so it was it? It came out originally in June. June. Um, there was a bit. There's been a bit of a pressing issue. Basically, is that Indonesia had e- the Eid um, holiday just before a lot right. of pressing plants got delayed. Um, so they have start. They are now ready. They are going out. Um, yeah. We've just not got our copies yet. Um, so hopefully they'll be touching down um, sooner rather than later. sooner rather than later. But I think you know. We laugh, and I like my running joke is that it's kind of like it's the brutal death metal Chinese democracy. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a comic book. Um, you know, I think the credit is to, to be brutally honest with you, with, with what these guys put into it, you and Dave, because there was a lot, you know, we, you know, there's a lot of work that was put in when we started recording because obviously we hired um, we hired Julia from Hidden Cement to record the drums. Yeah. And then, you know, Ewan sat down and was just like, yeah, I'm not. Can, you know the guitars are good, but I can improve these <laughs> with the with because I'm now I've got someone who's laid down actual drums. drums. Yeah. yeah, that that makes a difference to the writing process. I it imagine. Did. Yeah, it's, it's going because when you um when you're playing along to drums, um e- even with a human drummer, they tend to do at least in my experience the, the same kinds of things and throughout the song. So you you very subconsciously pick up on the nuances of what they're doing and. Um, Judo just he, he took the drums to a, to another level. Um, all kinds of I don't know, you know um, amazing bits there, and it's like I, I could I couldn't Dave couldn't just play what we played on the guide tracks for him. We had to go and tweak it to, to, to match it all. Not not just match the match the drums complement the drums where he'd probably picked up on something. He changed the beat a bit. It's like, okay, that means I can play it something a bit differently. But he's a world class drummer. Yeah, and I'm 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 in my like spare room in, <laughs> in some place out of Birmingham, and I, I remember when it came to the first bit of recording, it's like I've got these amazing drum tracks. I'm scared to record. It's like how am I going to like shine a torch to this thing? You know, it's just yeah. such, such a good quality. So um, yeah, heck of a lot of work, um, and really pleased with how it came out. Really pleased with how it came out, and especially like um, Sam as well, Sam Turbot, who did the mixing and mastering, just. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I think um, if 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 we think about the classic albums uh, from from that early two thousands um, period, I, th- I think we've um, kind of met our met our goal there. Really, for, for, for what we're aiming for. Just going back to the drum side of things. So this is just to put like into perspective what he did. So he got the tracks on a Thursday or a Friday. Right. He was in a studio the next. I think he was in the studio either the next day or like two days later. Yeah. And I'd 
track had the track I'd had half the album drum tracks wow. in my inbox. That's insane. Um, and then I got the next lot the next day. So <laughs> that's kind of, you know, that that's the level we're talking wow. about. It's yeah. unbelievable, considering that how many months did it take us to learn it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Week yeah. in, week out. Yeah. Yeah. And was there ever any possibility of shows with him? Is there a possibility uh, of shows no, with him? No. no, no. no. Um, we, 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 we paid him an awful lot of money. Uh, <laughs> we paid him an awful lot of money. Um, so yeah, no. <laughs> because at the end of the day, you know, this this is a business. And yes. He, you know, yeah. He you know he has a talent which would cost money. Yeah. And yeah. It would not be financially viable um, for us. Or him. Or him. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I well, think it'd be financially well, viable for him, but well, we yeah, financially yeah. viable. You, yeah. you guys would be bankrupt. I mean, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if yeah. anyone wants to, if anyone wants to book us and pay us three grand, then yeah. you know, maybe. But <laughs> that's a shame because <clears throat> I think that'd be an amazing show really I mean yeah. we do use his drum tracks live yeah and I think that's another thing that we wanted to make sure that we weren't we weren't going back to, to the programme because you know no disrespect this isn't meant as a, as a slight and programme drummer because you know we did it for a long time yeah. yeah and death metal something that I think you can kind of it, you know there's very limited people especially in the UK who can play this style of drums yeah yeah definitely um, so it, do, it is a necessity for a lot of bands. Yeah. And, um, but I think when it came to actually putting out a, a record, um, we had to make sure that um, that we were getting what we wanted. And then yeah. when when Ewan was in contact with, with, with Sam Turbot about mixing, I remember him saying to him, um, we want it clear, not clean. Right. Because the, I think the problem you do get with a lot of modern death metal albums is... They're overproduced. Yeah, I think yeah. It, not that I want it to sound like shit, but <laughs> we want it. You want to hear the riffs, but you also. Th- I think the grit is the yeah, integral part start. of yeah. those early <coughs> Absolutely. two thousands cool death metal albums. Yeah, yeah. even even longer than that. I think maybe it's again but our, our reference points again being that bit older. I mean, you know, bands like Incantation, the or, Gods, Incantation, um, even, even going back to like the um, the rawness of something like Possessed and yeah. um, early death and whatnot. It's, it's didn't didn't want it to be um, hyper clean and typewriter drums and um, quantize to this that and the other. So I was speaking to a friend about this the other day that when he came to say recording the guitars. I made sure that they sounded right, right to the ears, but I wasn't being obsessive about it being completely all lined up on the, uh, on the transients, on the, um, uh, uh, when you can visually see it in the, uh, in your, yeah, in your, in your door. It's, uh, it had to be right to the ears, and I think it gives it that little bit of, Human- little bit, you little need bit some of life, hum- yeah, humanity to it. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, we've all seen bands who have a very, very ultra tight album, and they can't do it live. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. I have seen a lot yeah. of bands do this, and it's like it does ruin it. Yeah, you know, because it's like don't sound, if you don't sound like what you sound like on the album, then what's the point? Yeah, don't go wrong. There are a lot of bands who can do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there are a lot yes. of bands, but you know, I think I, you know. But also, I've seen some extremely t- you know big bands, and you know, I see them live. It's very dark on stage. <laughs> are, are they playing it? Well, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. You never know, do you? You never know. You never know. <laughs> at least we, at least we can honestly, apart from the drums, yeah. that we're yeah. pla- we, yeah, we, yeah, are, yeah. we are playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here's, here's a struggle for you. It wasn't my transmitter cutting out. It was my tape machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Milli Vanilli style. Yeah. <laughs> for, for, the, for the young kids. YouTube Billy Vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did it take you for the for the whole process, the writing and then oh, recording oh, and everything? Yeah. Eight years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the first, so Elective Amputation was the first song that was written. Yeah. That was written in 2016, I think. Yeah. Um, because Scott was still in the band, um, and then we wrote Hereditary Hatred after it. Um, Whilst um, we had the lineup with um, Steve and Dan Brooks um, and Chris on drums. and Chris on drums, so then when 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 that lineup disp- disbanded and me and Dave were like, okay, are we going to continue or not? Yeah. Um, and the, the funny the, the funny story is is that when we put out the advert for the guitarist, is that Ewan contacted us and was like, I'd love to try out, 
<laughs> the irony was we'd asked you in a couple of years prior about joining. Um, so we, so basically then we kind of got back. Um, we started practicing. We got um, butcher my master done, and then we were just like, all right, let's you guys carry on, you know, writing the songs. Um, and then it was cut. So it was kind of like started 2016. We were kind of had. We had the the, guide, the basic guide tracks done by the end of 2019 um, to kind of be like, all right, we've now got a collection of songs that we're, that we're happy with. The yeah. lyrics weren't all written, but it's death metal. Who gives it a fuck? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. um, and then, yeah, so we just, yeah, so we went from there. So, yeah, it's, it's taken about eight years. Yeah. You know, it's it's a long... There's it's, been a lot of challenges. Yeah. Line-up changes is obviously one. Yeah. Personal circumstances, obviously, for, have changed for some of us. Yeah. You know, and life, you know, life gets in yeah. the way. And yeah, yeah, it can't be easy. I mean, COVID, in some ways, would have been a great to do the album, but it just didn't quite work that way. Yeah, mm, yeah. Know, there's a lot lot of underlying issues, I suppose. But even then, like, when, when, we, kept, when we decided that went after the pandemic we didn't jump to playing shows again no. because it was like what's the po- we, what's the point because we didn't want to get bored of the material right and i think that and we didn't want to come back and play the same songs we've been playing so it gave us a bit of time to kind of you know recharge i suppose and and get it kind of you know ready and out there yeah and if you've come back really fresh then that's got to be a good thing hasn't it mm. yeah and how's the reception been to the album seems to have gone down well yeah um, it's yeah I mean people have enjoyed people have enjoyed it people who've you know you know people who basically got in touch and been like you know and, gi- and given us props on it you know it's, yeah but to be brutally honest with you like it was it's an album for us sure and you know so I think obviously that, we want people to like it <laughs> yeah no yeah, that's people, obvious it's like you know, but, it, it's, it's, you it's, know. it's our baby yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and that comes across just talking to you guys how proud you are yeah, of it's, it it's our material we're yeah. really proud of what we've done yeah. Yeah. yeah I think we've done a really good job of it and you know going forward we've got some you know me and you and we're talking about you know writing the next you know what we're going right. to do next you know we've got some, some basic ideas nothing nothing in concrete yet but you know but watch this space I suppose on that yeah. one Unfortunately, I didn't get to review it for the Razor's Edge. I don't know who who grabbed Dan Barnes it. Dan Barnes did yeah. it, yeah. But I'm, I must say, genuinely, hand on heart, it's probably one of my releases of the year. I've I've really enjoyed listening to it. And Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It. I don't know how you've done it, but it it has that real balance between technicality and brutality that that I really like. You mm. seem to have nailed that. It's been a good year for Death Metal as well. Yeah. It's like, you know, you've had Brodequin, you've had Malignancy, you've had Defeat Society. Well, sorry, Defeat Society's it's coming. coming. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've got the new Iniquitous Savagery record. And that's just like, you know, that's just four off the top of my head that have yeah. kind of coming. It's yeah. been a really... And that kind of just, again, leads to just like the strength of how things are going. You know, there's constantly, you know, the, you know, the kind of like, the Trailblazers are still releasing absolutely just like we listened phenomenal. to the new Nile on the way up we did that's yeah, amazing yeah. 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 Cannibal Corpse yeah. on the way up yeah you know I've not heard the new Cannibal Corpse yet but uh, I've been listening to Nile yeah, and uh, that's that's good and I think yeah and I think it's just you know there's such a, a quality quality a uh, quality of material it's um, uh, it's we were always going to get hit with that thing there's always going to be kind of like there's always going to be a lot coming but yeah I think it yeah, it definitely it definitely um, you know it definitely holds its own with um, with the big boys yeah, yeah, I hundred percent agree with that. And so, what next for the future? Uh, Dave, you talked about new material. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very early, stages. very early days. Is that early, it's, I it's don't that know. Early. About this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we don't, we we want to kind of keep things going. You know, we don't yeah. just like stagnate. Yeah, yeah. You know, things took took a long time to get to this point. Mm. So why not keep it keep going? the momentum going? Keep it going. Yeah. You know, obviously drummer is obviously the thing that we're kind yeah. of you know need to potentially have a conversation about at some point you know we would like i think we would all like ideally a drummer yeah to live yeah. With, yeah you know but obviously it has to be the right person yes you know? yeah or even just someone to bounce you know? ideas off yeah. so we're not biting with because oh, dave can program drums like an absolute beast he really really can um but i think you, you know you you can all. You, it just. It'd be nice to work with someone who can actually, who's, 
can play the instrument and be yeah. able to kind of mean that that's one less thing for Dave to have to concentrate yeah. on. Yeah, and they they um, could make suggestions, couldn't yeah. they, on what they th- what they feel would yeah. would work. And exactly. Yeah, it's nice to be able to work outside of guitar pro occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> So, are you scouting today for drummers or <laughs> anyone? No, we're, no, we're, no, we're, no, we're just here to enjoy yeah. ourselves today. Yeah, yeah. I think enjoy ourselves. And then we've got one more show. Is yeah, this year? yeah, on the 8th of, 8th the 8th of November, November in, um, in Worcester. In Worcester yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, who else is on that lineup? Um, who? Desecrator and Foulbody Autopsy. Right. So, it's, it's all. It's it's all non-live drummed. Yes. Um, <laughs> so basically, the sound man's going to be very very happy. Yes. Changeovers will take absolutely no no time after that. No one will decide they're left-handed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else. That rat's come back. <laughs> it's just run past into here. Um, but yeah, like I said, then. So I think yeah, that least on the down. So yeah, like Dave said, I think you know just continuing progression and being able to like work on some new ideas, whether it's another full length or, or just or whatnot. Yeah. Just see what happens. Yeah. Just see kind of like where that takes well, us. We have the artwork. We do. Have the <laughs> we have the artwork. Ah, you've already got artwork we've for the new artwork. Right. Yeah, we've, already we, we, we've already got some artwork. Like, I know you were quite pleased with the artwork for oh, for the, the album, the weren't you? It's absolutely beautiful. So talk us through that process. Did you give any kind of guide for the for the artist we on gave, what you wanted? Or? So the art was done by Gruesome Graphics. Um, so we sent Nev the lyrics to Electric Amputation. Right. He gave us two concept ideas. Um, we picked one of them. And we just said, because Nev at the time was still heavily doing a lot of his um, bright cartoon artwork. Right. Um, and... Which is, you know, his artwork's fun and good, but we wanted that style, but not bright. We wanted it yeah, to look bright. Yeah, murky. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, and like I say, we got the art, we got the piece, and it was just like, yeah, it's got that kind of like nice. It looks like a comic. Yeah. And um, it's yeah, it just came. Uh, it was like, yeah, that's that's what we're talking about. And I, I was wondering if you're going to turn that guy on the album cover into a kind of mascot, Ed, Eddie type of thing. <laughs> it's going to be like Qua. Uh, yeah. Dan's yeah. going to put your costume on. And yeah. We'll get Povey, can't we? Can do <laughs> yeah. We could get Povey, yeah. He did it for gold, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> he could get be electively amputated on stage. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> I'll message him later. Oh, we've got a for you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I say, it was just, it was just a, a really solid piece, and it, it the thing is, it gave it gave us well, it gave me ideas on because I'm a terrible lyricist. I'm not gonna lie. Right. Um, <laughs> and it gave me kind of like it gave me a concept to work on. Yeah. Um, which was essentially this this creature. Yeah. Was. Not not every song, but it's loose. I kind of worked the lyrics about a bit like a season of the X Files. Right. So if you watch the X Files, you'll have the main story, and then you'll have kind of the offshoot. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Um, what well, your creature features. Once yeah, while, your yeah. creature features, yeah. and it's a bit yeah. like that. So you've got kind of about five tracks on the album, which are about this creature, and then you've got the offshoot, like creature feature kind of um, tracks on there. So um, well, that's quite an interesting way of doing it, and keeps things fresh. I think, doesn't it? So, you know, who knows, you know, if that's going to kind of like... So almost like a concept album in a way. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I expect, I expect to see plushies of him for sale at the next gig then. and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glove puppets. <laughs> That'd well, be pretty that, cool. You know, maybe. <laughs> Obsession, you know, I do like coffee, you know, so, you know, we... <laughs> <laughs> and we all like, I mean, you do like Devon Townsend, so yeah, who knows? Maybe say. we could. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe we could, that's, that's an area of, um, of merchandising. It seems all the bands nowadays are doing hot sauces. I know you're into your hot sauces, Dan. Yeah, I know, but um, I don't. I don't. Ha- I don't think I could. Um, I don't think I'd get away with that. You know? No. No. I think. Um, yeah. That, my, my kitchen would probably not pass health inspections at the time. <laughs> 
does it look like the cover of Electivision? No, <laughs> just, you know, I don't, I, don't, I, just like, you know, I don't want to have to have my kitchen vetted if I want to make some hot sauce, you know what I mean? <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for a great set, guys. Right, really enjoyed it. Good luck for the future, and thank you for a great album. Thank you. Thank and you. I hope everyone out there listening to this interview goes and picks up Elective Amputation by... Or just listens to it. Or even just listens to it, it's yeah. 29 minutes of your life. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need. It's all you need. Because, yeah, it's definitely worth to listen. It's worth your time. It's worth everything, yes, really. it is. <laughs> so thank you, guys. It's great meeting you, and... I'll see you around, I'm sure. You will. You will. Um, Thank you very much. We'd better head back in and see who's next. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for listening. Make sure you keep up to date with all of our interviews by subscribing to our channel. For all the latest news reviews, interviews and more, head over to our website, www.theraisersedge.rocks.